I'm going to give you five things that if you do without even changing your golf swing will actually drop shots from your game. And number one is coming to your first tee prepared. I did this very badly the other week. I actually turned up to film with Pete Finch and had left my putter in my hotel room because it was in one of my other bags. So that's a great example. And even now, if I were going out to play in the comp, because I'm actually testing out a new driver and a new three wood, I've got too many golf clubs in my bag. We saw it happen to Ian Woosnam, even in the open, trying to drive it on the range before he teed off in the open championship, walked to the tee, forgot to take it out, DQ'd because he teed off and had 15 clubs in his bag. So make sure, firstly, you've got the right amount of clubs in your bag. It might be that you've been down to the driving range and you've actually been practicing with your seven iron and a driver with a lesson and you forgot to put them back in. It might be that you've not got enough golf balls in your bag. How many times do you know as well of a person who comes screeching into the car park, runs up to the tee, they're searching around in every single pocket, I've not got a glove, give me a minute. I'm just gonna to go to the pro shop. I'll be back in a minute, I'll be back. And off they go running. And it doesn't help you play good golf this. If you come prepared, whether it's spending five minutes the night before, whether it's half an hour, however much time you wanna put into your preparation, just make sure you've got the right amount of clubs. Make sure you've got the clubs you need. Make sure you've got balls, you've got gloves, teas, snacks, drinks. Don't be that person who's turning up on the first tee, completely flustered, not ready to play, and then it takes you about four or five holes to settle in when you finally settle down and you go, oh, oh God, yeah, I actually uh, made uh, six bogeys in those first um, six holes. That's great, because now my score's gone. Come prepared. Number two, and this is one of my pet hates when I play with some of my friends or even some of my lessons. When we come onto a teeing ground, sometimes the tees aren't actually lined up to where you should be going. So take for instance here on the 15th at Warrington. If I actually now just get in, put my ball in the ground and I just align myself square to this tee box. So I align myself with all the angles of the tee. I actually make a pretty good golf swing, hopefully, and I hit this where I'm actually aligned up to. There we go. It's just going down the left-hand side of the fairway, and now it's bouncing back towards the rubbish. And that is because a lot of the tees aren't aiming where you want to be going. So when you come onto a tee peg, actually just come back a couple of paces and have a look as you stand now in the middle, as you can see from this angle, if I just move slightly aside here, we have a line actually where the tee's aiming and it's into the trouble down the left-hand side of the fairway as where here, I want to probably be aimed a little bit more up the right-hand side or maybe towards the middle of the fairway. So if I now come back in and I peg my golf ball up and I actually align where I want to go, I'm gonna try and hit it up the right edge of the fairway because the uh, fairway slopes from right to left here. I feel dramatically out of line with this tee. And if we just put both images up of the before and after, you can see how different the angle is of where I'm aiming. So now if I make the same or similar golf swing, I didn't hit that one anywhere near as good. It's gone down the right hand side, popped in the rough, couple of bounces, and hey presto, I'm on the fairway all because I took the time there just to aim. I didn't do anything different with my golf swing. I literally turned my body 15 degrees and that helped me find a fairway. So just pay a little bit of attention when you get onto the tee box. Don't just walk on and go, there it goes. I'll just aim down that way because it isn't gonna work and you might make a great golf swing but end up with a poor result. Let's take a look at the next one. Tip number three is all to do with this. Get a look at that disgusting and the amount of people I see trying to hit shots when their golf clubs look something similar to that, you are wasting your time because you have lost control. You need to make sure that you get a good clean on them. So A, a towel would help, just give it a little, little spruts off there. And then B, whether it's a tee peg and you get into those grooves and you actually just give your golf club a clean there or one of those little brushes, there's a reason why the pros do it after every single shot and their clubs look immaculate. It's because you're gonna get the most control out of your wedge. As amateurs, we might not be the best strikers of the golf ball. So we actually need to make sure we're getting the most out of the grooves. The pros know that they're gonna get in the middle pretty much. So 
they know that they're going to get some spin as well. Us, we need to make sure we've got clean clubs and we've got clean grooves. It literally took me all of 10 seconds then to make sure the club is now looking something like that where the grooves are nice and clean and I'm actually going to get some control on the shot because if you don't, you could hit a pretty nice shot. If you've got mud, grass, whatever it may be, and you're hitting a wedge in, there's not enough of the uh, ball interacting with the grooves. You could lose a little bit of spin as it's coming in, and that could result in maybe it going three, four, five feet beyond the flag, which then makes that putt harder to hold. So tip number three, make sure that you just have nice clean grooves and you can get a little bit of a better interaction with the club and the ball when you're hitting your shots. And that goes from three iron all the way down to lob wedge. Let's take a look at another one. Oh my God, that is so bad as a golf shot. What have you done there? That is absolutely pathetic. See where that one went? Did you, did you get it down? And that is tip number four, make sure when you hit a bad shot, don't just be walking around, head in the hands, cursing to the gods. Actually watch where the ball's going because now, I saw it set off. Before it got to the peak of the flight, I knew it was missing the fairway. I knew it was in danger. So I stopped looking. But I don't know how far right it went. I don't know how far it got down there. And if I now lose that golf ball, I've got to tee off again as where, on courses where there's maybe a little bit more rough about, maybe there's more trees or whatever. If you hit a bad shot, you've got to make sure your eyes are on that golf ball because it might pitch in the canopy of a tree and kick down somewhere. It might take a hop into a rough, but if you can actually see where it goes and get a good spot on it, you can then at least stand a chance of finding that golf ball and playing it back towards safety, back towards the fairway, wherever it may be. As well, if you've just done what I've done, your playing partners aren't going to watch it for you. Sometimes they're too busy thinking about what's going on in their golf games. So make sure if you do hit a poor tee shot like that, you've got eyeballs on it to see where it's going. Otherwise, it's a lost golf ball and then you're teeing off and it's three off the tee. Keep your eyes on the ball. And this is a final tip here, making sure we're not seeing loads of that on the golf ball because the amount of times that I play with people and I see them just walk up onto the green, don't even repair the pitch mark sometimes. They just walk up, hit the putt without even cleaning it, without even moving it. A, it might be laying a slight little indentation, you never know. And then secondly, if you've got mud like that on the golf ball and that gets caught in between the face, it's gonna deaden your strike and you're not gonna get the pace. Also, as it rolls, it's not gonna get a true roll because it'll be bouncing and bobbling and all off, all off that mud there. So something as simple as putting a club in behind. And as we're talking now, I've even got that golf ball looking pretty decent. Give your thumb a little lick, whatever it may be, clean it on your towel, however you do it. But just at least give yourself a good chance of actually hitting a half decent putt now because you can place it back knowing that that ball is nice and clean. You're gonna get a pretty good strike on it and that mud isn't gonna hamper the putt all in the sake of a couple of seconds. So make sure when you're on the green, mark that golf ball, give it a little clean and then hit your putt. Guys, those were five things that you can do without even changing your golf swing that will help you improve your scores. Make sure you adopt those in your next round of golf and we'll see you in another lesson very soon.